sometimes just little dots and dashes and the whole thing looks more complete. Hello, do you want your dinner? Hi everyone, I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. When I'm drawing mushrooms, we're going to put a whole kind of bunch of them together to make a little um, arrangement in a minute. When I'm drawing mushrooms, there's kind of three lines that's involved with a mushroom. Um, there's the, <coughs> excuse me, there's the trunk, the stem, which is basically a U, um, because when they come into the ground, they, they have this kind of curved effect down the bottom there. So basically a U shape. And then you're going to draw, if, the, if you're looking at, at it sideways on, you can draw the bottom edge like that, and then you just go around the top like that, and that gives you the shape of the mushroom. But if you want to see the underneath of it a little bit, you draw your U, and then you draw the underneath of it. Any oval shape will do, it doesn't have to be even. If you look at a mushroom, you'll see. And then you just go around the top like that. And then on the inside here, usually most of them have something like this, the gills, which are arranged in a circle around the stem here. Sometimes they have a kind of frilly thing here. Sometimes, not all of them, but it's where this was attached to this. Because when they're younger, they are more like this. And this is closed up. Here it's open and you're looking at it from the top. Here it's open and you're looking at it from underneath. But here, this is still sealed up. So you can't see the gills there inside. And there are other sorts, of course, ones that have very thin stems like that. And then they, they go up on the outside. So they're more like this. And the gills are here. There's that sort. And then sometimes you get these very, very narrow things, which are just little, little ones like this. That's not a very good shape. So that's basically what all we need to be able to do to put together the drawing that we're going to do next. Oh, and also perhaps the occasional oak leaf like this, just with a wavy line around the outside edge and uh, um, veins off to the side, possibly a an acorn, which would be something like that, with a stem down here, and then of course your oak leaf out here. Okay, I've got a sheet here of um, Lavis Fidelis paper, which is a, an arches or arch paper, um, slightly thinner than the 140 pound that we're used to. This is I think it's 120 and it's smoother on the back than it is on the front, which makes it quite nice because it makes a very nice uh, card if you want to use it for a greetings card, because you can paint on the rougher side and then when you fold it and you're on the inside to do your writing, it's smoother. So you can do your calligraphy on the inside there. So that's quite nice. So, okay, so let's, um, I've been doing some playing around with mushrooms here in my um, 365 days of art, just trying out different colours. And I think it's a really quite nice idea to have a background wash. So you have two choices here. You could go onto your paper with a nice loose wash and put the wash in first, and then put your mushrooms on top, <clears throat> in which case it would probably be best if you made them somewhat opaque. So that's one way of doing it. Or you can do what I'm going to do today, which is basically quicker. And I'm going to draw the mushrooms in an arrangement and I'm going to paint them and paint the background around them. So this is my preliminary sketch and uh, I'm going to work from that. So let's sit down and um, quickly sketch this arrangement here. I'm going to um, start off with a fairly large mushroom on this side here. I'm going to give it a bit of a skirt but um, don't take any notice of that because it's basically the same idea. You're going to just do a big U shape there and basically a U shape here. 
and then the squiggly edge, so nothing special. Then another little one here, and maybe we make another one come out over here. Okay, then I think it's a good idea to make sure that your mushrooms overlap. So don't be afraid to kind of, um, you know, just make them overlap, basically. That's the underside, and we'll just have a little bit of the top side showing there. Okay, and uh, maybe we'll have a, an oak leaf here on the ground. And let's put a little bunch of three mushrooms here. Trying to trying to draw this as quick as I can, so don't don't imagine that you need to go anywhere near as fast. I'll put some grass on the bottom there, and then maybe I'll have a this is like a sort of speed speed drawing competition. Well, it's not a competition, of course, it isn't a competition, um, but I don't want to keep you waiting too long. So I'm going to put a uh, a leafy branch up here to break into that and then behind I'm going to have some some of those ones that come on really long stems and when, when once we've painted these we will embellish them and or you can and uh, that will be nice because you'll be able to do whatever you want to make them fun and funky and so down here we'll have one of those Ones that looks a bit like a ones that look a bit like a trumpet. So that goes round like that. That's it. And then maybe we'll have another little squat fat one or two even down here. And then on the right hand side to match this one, we're going to do a big one, but it won't be the same. It'll be a different shape, but we're going to do it. Nice big toadstool. And a lovely big lid like that. And then on the top, I just need to um, my reference material here quickly for this because I can't remember what they look like. We're going to pop a, a snail up here. If you don't like snails, leave him out. doesn't really need a mouth. So there we are. And then from um, the top, Lois Fidelis will take that off. We can have a few leaves if we feel we need them coming down and maybe some berries. Like that. over here perhaps and all of this be quite a lot of painting to do so we'll see how that goes there we are and uh, a little frilly thing around here because that's where that was okay okay so I'm just going to um, spray a little bit of water on these paints just to um, enliven them a little bit before I start painting. 
And uh, I think I'm going to start with a size 7. doesn't really matter. Well, maybe actually having said that, for the, for the very first thing I'm going to do, probably want a little bit bigger brush, so I'll go for an 11 here, just an ordinary nylon round. Because so I'm going to start, I think, with this rather dramatic looking mushroom here. And this one's going to be red, so of course I will start by painting it yellow, just because of course you would, wouldn't you? So that puts a nice bit of light into it. And then um, we've got lots of different reds here to choose from in this set. And as you try them out, you'll decide which ones you think are the best, most appropriate for this. I think possibly this one here, which is, I think it's cadmium. I've got the guide to the universe here. Yeah, that's cad cadmium scarlet. That's always a good red to start with because it's fairly um, uh, red. You know, it's not pinkish or bluish or too orange. It's, it's just red. So just drop that in and that will just be the undercoat because we will have to come back and darken that down a bit. Um, so that's that. And uh, let me see, what should I do next? Perhaps give that a chance to dry before I do the next one here. So I'll pop over to this side, I think. And um, I'm going to put in here, I need what I need also. I should have picked that up. need a little dish just to try out my colours. I'm going to put a little bit of blue. So let's say that's um, ultramarine. So I'll just pop a little bit of that in for the top of the um, mushroom and then I'm going to add to that some um, uh, what did I just pick up there? I have to keep referring to my chart. That's a maroon colour. And uh, we're just going to put that in and let that mix. And because that's ultramarine, that granulates a bit. So you'll see a, a bit of texture cropping up there. So that's, that's a good start for the top of the mushroom, I think. And that will sort of mix and mingle a bit as it goes along. And then um, we've got this funny trumpet shaped one here. So I think I'm going to pop in some orange underneath. I have no idea what colour they are in real life, do you? Uh, so we'll just do that. And uh, in the top part, I think that probably should be quite a dark colour, especially in the middle, and we'll let that bleed a bit because, you know, it looks a bit more realistic if it's got a bit of a fuzz going on. And this one down here, I'm going to do a pinkish mushroomy kind of colour. All of these will have second coats to give them more um, variety. And since I've now got a little bit of this mushroom colour on my brush, I'm going to go in and paint some of the stems since I've got that handy. A little bit of a frill there. And then we could, could put a bit of a sort of bluish colour underneath this mushroom here. And um, maybe down here too, similar, just let that run again a little bit. I thought I should have this 
over here, shouldn't I, somewhere where you can see it. I thought I would make a kind of darkish green for this one. And then maybe a sort of blue colour for this one. Like that. And just dole that down to a kind of grey for the stems and the underneath. Both of them. You can join up that gap if you want to later. When we do the next coat. So there's that, and then perhaps we'll go a little bit greener again. Um, no, I want colour, I want a bluish green. Bum, ba, bum, ba, dum, bum. start with a little bit of that sap green and then a little bit of blue that will do no a bit more blue that's it that's what I was looking for so we put that on the top of that one and then down in the stem right and now I'm just going to swap to a slightly smaller brush because we've got to do the little ones now brown so we'll go with that to start with but we need to dull it down a bit right so that was maroon and um, maroon and burnt sienna and a little bit of uh, ultramarine to give us this colour. And then up the top here we were going to have some stripy ones so I'm just going to give them a pink stripe on the top and then an orange stripe <clears throat> you know you're painting whimsical when you have stripy mushrooms and then green again and then we want to pick up some mushroom colour for the underside Not so much chatting today with this one because it takes a certain amount of concentration. Don't want to go off track. Okay, so then now we're going to be somewhere up the top here and painting um, leaves. So I'm going to pop in some cap cadmium orange. Yes, that's right. Add me a orange for these here leaves and just put it in nice and loose 
and then we'll go for some brown or something like that to let that, <clears throat> um, what's the word, blend a little bit. Just put it in here and there. And then if you want to make it um, easy to do the veins, just pick up a stick of some sort. This is a Pentel, I think, um, Holbein, sorry. Holbein, uh, Japanese, bamboo pen. I've never used it for that, but I think that's what it's intended for. Okay, so a little bit more water. And this is this is maroon, this colour. So I'll just do several along here in this colour. I'm not using quinacridone gold in this painting because I haven't got it in this set, I don't think. Uh, no, it's not in this set. But the cadmium orange is a good alternative. It's not that different. Yeah, it's a nice colour, that. And then maybe we put some burnt sienna in there and let that bleed a little bit. If you scratch into the paint, then it's still very wet. And you get um, a dark line, and if you scratch into it when it's drier, you get a light line. So we'll just put some berries up here. You can use um, the paint quite thick and it's pretty opaque or you can use it thinner and it's quite um, transparent, it's up to you really. Some more berries over here. Put a little bit of red in that. I'm sure this colour is just the same as everything else, will dry lighter. So again, although that looks fairly dark over here, um, when it's dried, it will look different. Okay. Um, here we have some more yellow leaves. It has a definite autumnal feel about it. And uh, then, yes, we've got these ones down the bottom, some oak leaves. And this one, if you mix the paint loosely when you pick it up, don't you know, don't, don't mix it like it's gone into the food blender or something. Just give it a slight, a light, a light touch is what you need. Mm. 
Okie doke, and then we'll do some veins in this as well. Makes a difference to the shape. I'm going to have to let it dry in a minute because um, otherwise I'm going to end up touching bits and pieces of it. So we put a light coat of blue in there and then we'll make that darker later. Oh, uh, these stems here need painting in. And that's now more or less dry. So we'll come back in with a darker red. We let that run a bit and um, a bit of darkness down the bottom here. And these two, they want to be a bit brown. Mm. And then over here, once again, we have these leaves. We have a kind of little bit of a repetitive theme going with the golden leaves cropping up everywhere. And we better drop in some I had forgotten all about the little snail on top of here. We have to paint him in. So we're going to do him in lilac. And then I'm just going to pop in the shell in a nice orange. And then when that's dry, we'll put uh, some lines in to show the way the shell, the shell goes. Okay, so then now just down the bottom, we need some sort of undergrowth. We're not quite finished yet, but just to get us started on the undergrowth there. Okie doke, I'm going to let that dry and uh, go and feed the dogs because it's half past three. 
Okay, so that's dry now, and I'm just going to mix up a little bit of um, a nice kind of neutral sort of background colour here. This is a little bit of burnt, um, yellow ochre and uh, a bit of this, um, I don't know what colour, what they call that, they call that natural beige and uh, a little bit of white, make it a little bit lighter. So I think that will probably do. And plenty of water. And then I'm just going to come into the picture and just very quickly, easily, and without too much uh, worrying too much about accuracy, just paint round. Try not to touch too much what you've already painted because it will run a bit, but it's not the end of the world if it does, because it's not finished yet. So you do this at this point. Let's come in as close as we can. And uh, down here, we're going to put these other uh, mushrooms in on top of this background layer. This just unifies the whole thing. And up here where we've got some space, we'll pop in some more leaves in the background just to give the idea of this being a, a woodland setting, a sort of forest setting where uh, these magical mushrooms hang out along with Brian the snail. Who people always used to say that snails on drugs. Remember that magic roundabout? There used to be a whole, it was a children's program and everybody used to, well, anyway, <laughs> the people from England will know what I'm talking about. Time for bed, said Zebedee. There we are. And keep that nice and loose and uneven because we don't need it to be anything else. And then we'll pick up a bit more. And I'm just going to drop in some odds and ends. Maybe grey it down a little bit as well. And this colour probably worked quite well for these mushrooms in the background here. And a few more leaves down here. And we're just going to let that mix and mingle. So next thing, I think probably we'll pop a little bit of a little bit more colour on here. I am going to put some white spots on this when it's dry, so we we'll just make that a little bit more colourful. And uh, in here, let's just darken the underside of the mushroom cap a bit like that and this also wants to come down a bit and let that frilly thing be there and we're going to have to sort of build up the shadows as we go along I'm kind of run out of paint here, so I'm going to have to mix up some some more. So we take some of this reddish brown colour and add some blue. 
and then we get a grey, a mushroomy kind of grey. Just painting these ones in the background. Don't forget their stalks. Got a sort of bluey grey kind of colour here. And just put that in, always slightly different to what um, you've mixed because you're going over the top of another colour and that will influence the outcome. And we just want to increase the amount of shadow on some of these, but try to only go in when it's dry. Getting to the point where we're going to stop painting for a bit and um, use the, the um, pen and ink. There we are, we've got some so a nice spiral there. Yeah, we need to uh, just darken this a little bit here behind the stem and then a bit of shadow down the stem. And a few more leaves in the background. random. Make this a little bit darker. And this one too is green. I think probably worth just these ones here at the back, the stripey, we're just going to join up all of those stripes with a little bit of the creamy colour. And probably just a few spatters at this point. And then I'm going to move the paints out of the way. I think the cockerel thinks it's time for dinner. And I did it in, did I use brown or black? I think I used black. So let's see if I can find a pen. It doesn't, I don't think it wants to be really thick, probably a two or something.
Okay, let's see if that works. That's a three. And now, basically, I'm going to sharpen this up a bit. I start in the middle, perhaps. doing ink work on top of watercolour, a couple of things come to mind and one is if you have to sacrifice a pen for the sake of art it's not the end of the world and they're, they're, I don't like to waste things or anything but they're not expensive so if the worst comes to the worst and it dies in the service of art so be it because obviously if you are penning over somewhat damp paint then there's a good possibility that it will give up the ghost but somebody suggested the other day when I mentioned this that it's a good idea to just clean off your nib the pen nib at the end of the session when you finished just to take off the paint that might be adhering and I think that is a good idea so I will try to remember to do that. The ones that are in the background are going to be less inked. I'm not really going to do too much of that but the ones that have sort of pretty much lost their shape because that's the way I paint. Shapeless me. Um, those ones we will just kind of, kind of um, Bring them back. Okay, and this one here. And then after we've gone right the way around, all the important ones with the pen, just to them a bit more identity. Then I'm going to come back in with um, some white probably. And you don't have to do any of this. If you feel that your painting is fine at the point where I stopped and said I'm going to ink, you know, that's it's not a problem at all, is it? It's entirely up to you. I don't know, it's, it always feels to me that the um, painting sort of comes alive a bit more once it's got a little bit of ink on it, but that could be to do with my eyesight, you know, I mean, as you get older, you um, don't see things quite so vividly, so maybe, maybe it's a function of that for me. Who knows? Right, let's go around this big poisonous brute. That one's desperate for some white spots. Right, okay, so there we are. Let's give him his horns or whatever they call them. I'm sure I've missed some but I don't want to um, don't want to all do these ones in the background so much because they're meant to be in the background. May or may not want to do these ones. It's a optional. OK, 
Okay, so that will do for that, I think. And um, I'm going to now get my PH Martins white and a smallish brush. This is a number three round. And before this mushroom screams any louder, we will put some white dots. We have these ones here in France. I don't know if you have them where you are. Don't see them very often. Don't see them at all at the moment because I haven't been to the woods forest for ages. Maybe we might put a few white dashes on this one over here. I'm not quite sure why, but uh, I think that'd be quite nice. And then down here on these ones. And here, little tiny ones. Okie dokie. And perhaps we can put in some of the gills using white to save going really dark. Uh, eh. That would be in the middle. I'm not going to do it on that one, uh, or that one, come to think of it. Oh yes, I know, the other part that needed white is up here, probably. Just to make those fruits stand out a bit better, because they went a bit dark. These ones need a highlight. The little snail needs some eyes. And I think we're probably done enough. I think that will do. I think that's enough for now. You can put in more line work if you like. Well, this one here hasn't got any lines. Maybe he would like some lines. And you could boost up the colour as well a little bit if you wanted to and uh, it's possible you might want to um, have some darker ultramarine blue and uh, light red makes a good dark brown as you can see and sometimes just little dashes. You don't have to paint anything particular, just put in some dots and dashes and bits and pieces and this is and that's and the whole thing looks more complete. And as I said, you can carry on quite a long way. Hello, do you want your dinner? You're all right, okay, whatever. You see, the cat knows that I've nearly finished what I was doing. And don't you go around making people think that you're unhappy or hungry, because you're jolly well not. Yes, you're the only cat I know that gets fillet steak for dinner. Don't give me that rubbish. Right. I 
very nearly done. We're just going to put some, a uh, little bit of, what do you call it again? A bit more of that spattery thing, because that always looks good. And Bob's your uncle. So there we are. A woodland scene with mushrooms. Not entirely happy about the colour here. Might want to make that a bit darker. But if I do, you see, the white spots will run, so we won't bother doing that. So have a go at that. It's quite a lengthy uh, process, but you can always do part of it. Just take Brian the snail and his mushroom, for example, and a few leaves. And uh, I particularly like these two down here. I have never seen a green mushroom in my life, especially not that colour green. But uh, why? Why not? Why not? You know, why didn't God make mushrooms green? As somebody said the other day about peacocks or whatever. Why didn't God make blue poppies? That was it. The most popular post on Facebook at the moment in our groups is why didn't God make blue poppies? And everyone jumped in and said, but he did. So there. Anyway, I'll let you go on that thought and I'll see you again soon. Don't forget to give us a like and subscribe and to join the YouTube membership if you feel that way inclined. Just click on join and you aren't committed to anything. Just go for it. See you later. Bye now. Bye everyone. Bye bye.